really the whole Flux story is, it's an epic universe ending story in itself, but I also wanted to connect it in and to ensure that it was personal to the Doctor and that really it's grown out of the things that we set up at the end of series 12, what the Master has told the Doctor, what the Doctor is realising to be true, the existence of this shadowy organisation called Division. The flux wasn't an accident, it wasn't a naturally occurring event, it was made, it was placed because of you. And how that impacts on the Doctor's lives and also the emotional fallout for the Doctor from discovering what had happened to her. It's really important, I think, in any era of Doctor Who for the Doctor to have an emotional journey, to have an arc and to start one place and go on a voyage of discovery through their time on the show. And I always knew this was going to be the arc for Jodie's Doctor and that the third series would be about exploring the fallout from the information she got at the end of The Timeless Children. And really, the aim is to be telling these big, huge space opera stories alongside things that are emotional and challenging for the Doctor. And obviously, what we see at the end of episode six is that she has managed to track down some of the information she thought she wanted. But the very last images of episode six are really well, do you really want to know that? In, in having discovered it and in having that opportunity, does she actually want to know all the details of what she's been looking for and how happy is she with her own identity without knowing what she's lost? So a child was found by Tectaeum that wasn't native to Gallifrey. And Tectaeum discovered during an accident that this child has the ability to regenerate. And from there, Tectaeum's scientific, I suppose, discoveries and experiments end up producing a race of Time Lords. And essentially what we discover is that the Doctor is the original, that the gene splice has actually come from the DNA of the original me, him, her, they, all versions of the Doctor, which is particularly like a grain of sand in the eye to the Master, to know that a part of him has come from the Doctor. All I am is somehow because of you, and believe me when I say I cannot bear that. The character who summons the Doctor back to Division, we learn in episode five, who has pulled her out of the time storm very briefly in episode three, played magnificently by Barbara Flynn, is Tectoe. And we learn in episode five is responsible for and is part of Division, the black ops organization that originated on Gallifrey. Division is simple and indescribable. It began on Gallifrey as a group to ensure the safety of our galaxy. So. It's both a, an emotional and psychological showdown for the Doctor against the woman who found her and holds some of the secrets, but really not all of them. The next universe holds the other end of the wormhole where I found you. That universe may be where you're from. I think of the discoveries that would await us both there. We find out that the Flux was created by Division, by Tectoon, knowing that the Doctor would be unstoppable and after the point at which the Master had revealed to the Doctor what had gone on, the Doctor now has knowledge of Division and will come after them and will punish them for all the actions that they've taken through time and space and history. A huge revelation to the Doctor is it was created to essentially erase the Doctor and the responsibility of that and knowing that that destruction was to get rid of one huge curious brain who continued to ask questions and continued to search has created such positive adventures and positive relationships and positive outcomes has been the bane of Division's life and so the flux is created for the destruction of all that. That universe isn't going anywhere. It's over, Doctor. It has been ever since we let a virus into the experiment. What sort of virus? You. 
and Tech Taeun treats everything as an experiment. I think she's treated the Doctor as an experiment, she treated Gallifrey and the Time Lords as an experiment, and she's kept going on that, and she treats the universe as an experiment, and is now moving Division into another universe, having sort of, kind of, binned, or trying to bin what she's left behind of that first experiment. So she is the ultimate scientist with no regard for the moral context of what she's doing. You took something that didn't belong to you. <laughs> I rescued you. Would you prefer to have been left? You assumed I came through that wormhole, but you don't know. What if I was waiting there to be collected? What if I was supposed to be taken through it? What if whoever left me there was taken by that wormhole? What if, what if, what if? You denied me my life! I gave you a life. Everything you are is because of me. Swarm and Azure, I think, historically, were sworn enemies of the Doctor, sworn enemies of Division. Division existed as a self-appointed police and were responsible for imprisoning both of them. They imprisoned Swarm on a, a, a prison planet in that cage we see in episode one. I feel like they also put Azure into this sort of brutal memory wipe witness protection on Earth, where she's, she's been held prisoner to separate her from Swarm. And they appreciate that Ravagers are creatures of incredible power and danger and represent the force of time. What do you want? To reign in hell. The battle throughout the serial is really the, the conflict, as Holmes says, between time and space. Time is erosion. Time will erode space, and that's its, its mission. And the Ravagers, as demonstrated by Swarm and Azure are part of that plan and really want to help that plan come to come to fruition. They would like time to be malign force to be unleashed across the whole universe and they see the aftermath of the flux as a way of achieving that. Your role here is simple. You are space and we are time. You are both our playthings and our power source. Feel the time force growing. It's working. Just as we planned. So in taking the humans who have been made homeless by the flux where their planets have been destroyed, they've all gathered on Pisano and Azure and Passenger come along, kidnapped all those humans, and then Swarm and Azure have used the psycho-temporal energy of those humans to build a bridge. They've kind of feasted and harvested that energy to build a bridge back to where the Doctor and Tectaeun are in division and to, to get them there. Powered by the energy we harvested from the life forms of that universe. To you, Doctor. Right from the start, all it took was a little time. And all for this, to get beyond any one universe, to find division, to get revenge on those who imprisoned us so long ago. The information and the encounter she's had with Tectoon has been pretty complicated emotionally for the Doctor. And so I think it's an absolute storm of conflicting emotions for the Doctor in that she's only just got to meet her properly. She obviously holds a lot of information. She's obviously in, been involved in some pretty extraordinarily dangerous and evil behavior, but also she's been murdered in cold blood by Swarm. You released me. Now I release you. No, 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 don't touch her! which also prevents the Doctor from getting a lot of answers that she might still be craving. So um, she's, uh, at the very least, not best happy. Now, Doctor, you. Swarm Najur have held the Doctor prisoner all episode and are torturing her on this sort of infinite loop of disintegration um, in the world where all her memories are held. Meanwhile, they are redirecting the flux so that it will culminate in the destruction of Atropos, where time will be unleashed. But ultimately, their hubris leads them to a confrontation 
because the doctor has prevented the flux, uh, unbeknown to Swarman Azure, time remains imprisoned, and so the Ravagers have failed in their mission because of the doctor and are destroyed by time itself in the body of Swarm. I always wondered what time would look like. Ah, way to play to your ego. Save we have come to release you. And yet I'm still encaged in this pitiful realm of Atrobos. So the Doctor ends up stopping Swarm and Azura in a way that has come as a huge shock to them as well. They felt that they were the, the puppeteers throughout the entire kind of third act and have felt that they're the ones manipulating and controlling and causing the pain. And for them, they thrive on that. They thrive on the trauma. But what they haven't realised is I've been trisected across three different realities. And in that, versions of myself appear and I am present in those and able to act with hindsight and with knowledge from the other realities that I'm in to essentially put an end to the flux destruction. So their grand moment of offering to time and their savior and look at what we've done, look at what we've achieved for you to get you, to free you, has all been for nothing. And it turns from a grand moment into humiliation, which for them, is their demise, but also it's the worst kind of demise for characters that have thrived on performance and love the kind of the theatrics of death and destruction. So the fob watch contains all my previous lives and memories, the ones I don't remember, the thing that I cannot grab onto, which holds essentially the biggest question of all, who am I? Having a form of amnesia within your memories is terrifying and also it is something to search for. Now, when that search is over and it's being dangled in front of you, knowing it is a carrot being held by I'm leaving this behind. the ultimate of enemies and the ultimate destroyers, the ravagers who want to destroy the universe and the Doctor. It's knowing that they're using it as a tool, as a, as a weapon, is it takes all the Doctor's strength to kind of resist the temptation to, to search inside it. Historically in Doctor Who, a fob watch and a Gallifreyan fob watch has always circled around the ideas of identity and history for either the Doctor or the Master. And it's recurring here in Flux where all of the memories that were taken from the Doctor by division when they erase the Doctor's memory and they've now been transferred and stored in a Gallifreyan fob watch. So that fob watch contains the unknown past lives and the lost memories of the Doctor. Thank you for your service. We're sorry you won't remember it. I think you can put your own interpretations on why the Doctor decides not to fully open the fob watch and to access all her memories, all her past lives, all that information at the end of episode six. I think she has felt that there is a gap in her knowledge at the beginning of the series. That's what she's looking for after the fallout of information from the Master in The Timeless Children. I think wanting to know and being able to know are two very different things. And I think for her, it's about the identity that she has, the identity that she doesn't know about, and how happy she is not knowing. She chooses not to open that fob watch for now. She doesn't choose to destroy it. She chooses to put it on the back shelf in a very distant cupboard somewhere. It's a bit of a be careful what you wish for and be sure what you want. She's gained what she set out to discover. Whether she then wants the full ramifications of all that information is another question. And that's because the story is all about her identity, really, and there are issues around adoption 
and issues around personal identity and issues around how one views oneself. And really, I think for me, the reason she doesn't open it is because she understands that she has an identity already and that she isn't necessarily defined by a past that she hasn't known about. But actually, for this doctor, it's as much about what you do today and tomorrow as it is about who you were a very long time ago. Keep me safe. Somewhere deep within this TARDIS. Somewhere I can never find it. Don't forget to click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.